Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Stardew Valley, shall we? Continuing our complete beginner's guide. And it's day three of spring, and it's raining, you can hear it. Let's check the weather report, and it says that tomorrow it's going to be clear and sunny. So we're only going to get this day to benefit from the rain, but you can see, look, all of our crops have that nice dark brown soil, meaning that they are watered. We got some mail, let's check it out. This is an advertisement. I keep finding cool stuff, but my backpack is full. Does this sound like you? Well, Pierre's got you covered. Stop by Pierre's General Store today and check out our affordable size 24 backpack. Right, and that is what we already looked at. And, um, you know what? I haven't talked about it yet, but you see this box right here that opens up when you get close to it? This is where Mayor Lewis checks every night, which he said on day one when he says he comes by to check the bin. Uh, but I didn't really spend too much time talking about it. What you can do is click on it with the A button, and then anything in your inventory that you can sell will be colored here and not grayed out, and you can just drop it in and sell it if you like, right? That includes anything. That includes, um, you know, sticks, foraging items, crops that you've grown. Uh, we can sell any of this that we like, okay? I only sell things that I want to. I'm not too worried about it right now, um, but I did want to mention that to you. Now, let's continue our quest on the map to explore, all right? So we've talked to everybody here. We have not gone to the Wizard's Tower, okay? Um, and we went to Elliot's Cabin, but we also did not go to the Blacksmith, and we didn't go to the Joja Mart. Uh, so there's still some more people that we need to go talk to, and let's do that, because we don't have to work on the farm today, it's raining. I'm just gonna get my scythe out, uh, whoops. And clear a path down here. I really don't wanna cut this grass out if I don't have to. Um, not the end of the world. There we go. There it is, all right. Getting some fiber. Now you see these big boulders, we can't break this yet with our pickaxe. Gotta strengthen it up. And if you ever wanna strengthen your tools, well, the blacksmith is the place to go for that, which we'll look at in a moment. Okay, so this little signpost will explain um, that the Pelican Towns to the right, our farm is above us. And I'm gonna go here. Now, this is another giant lake that you can come and fish at, okay? You can fill up your can if you need to. And right here by this pink tree, on certain days of the week, um, there is a wagon that will stop there uh, with a trader who sells uh, like a random assortment of goods, some of them rare, and it's always good to check by. Friday is one of the days I will clue you in to look for it, but I'll kind of keep some of the mystery there as you explore. Now, um, the wizard's tower, it says it's locked, but you can hear someone inside. So, no go in the wizard's tower, but remember where that is and come by and check on it. Now, while we move down here, um, here's a dandelion. This area, here's another big fishing area, is actually really, really good for foraging. And there are some foraging things on this map that you can only get here and i'll show you um we're going to go down 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 and spring onions i don't mean you can only get them here but uh it's definitely a great place to come and get yourself certain kinds of foraging all right look wild horseradish perfect All right, uh, there's the sewer pipe down there. There are other ways like quests and, you know, uh, drops from enemies and things to get some of those spring onions and other foraging things, but you won't find them um, that plentifully and in that close together in that frequency anywhere else. All right, and let's go into town. Okay. There's Mayor Lewis. Probably going to talk to Marnie. 
And we're going to continue going east through Pelican Town, across the bridge. And instead of going to the museum, we're going to go north, okay? And we're going to go into the blacksmith. And here's Clint. And here you can right away buy ore, okay? You can buy copper, iron, coal, and gold. Never buy this. Never buy this unless you are like one piece away. You can get all of these in the mines when they open up. So don't stress about buying ore. But what you might want to do is upgrade your tools. Now, to upgrade anything to copper, unfortunately, you will need copper bars, which you get from copper ore and smelting it, which you can do on your farm once you get the ore and the means to gather it, but we're not there yet. So don't worry about what he offers just now, but it is worth talking to him. And he's a shy guy. His name is Clint. He also has one um, other function. Oh, uh, it's not showing yet, which is he can break geodes for you. So sometimes when you're mining, you can get geodes, uh, which have random things inside. Oh, there's a pine cone in there, but our inventory is full. Oh, this is a fun time to talk about this. Okay. So you saw how we gathered all those spring onions. Certain types of harvestable items, okay, um, come in quality varieties, okay? So there's regular, which has no star, there's silver, which is better than regular. And then there's gold, which is um, the best we can see right now. And then purple is like the ultimate. And you'll notice that the higher quality look, it actually gives you more health and energy when you eat the better quality spring onion. Um, people like them better. They usually sell better, all kinds of things. But the only consequence is they actually take up individual inventory slots, which... Um, you know, puts a kink, little hitch in our giddy-up. Now, I'm actually going to just go ahead and get rid of this stone so I can pick up the pine cone, just because it's, I don't think I have one yet. And there's Pam's trailer. We haven't talked to Pam yet, so we'll go get her. And we can go into the Joja Mart, and we can say, um, oh, if you want to buy some of these items, you can buy them here. Okay, now you'll notice that the um, parsnip seeds are actually cheaper than Pierre's, but I can't buy things until I buy a membership from Joja from Morris. And this is a choice that you have to make in the game of whether or not you side with the community center and Pierre effectively or Morris and... Um, Walmart, um, kind of, or like the company or the corporation that you quit to come to Stardew Valley. The choice is entirely up to you, and there are different rewards that you get for making that choice, okay? But I just wanted to let you know about it. Now, as you walk around, um, you can talk to people here. This is Shane, uh, but he won't talk to you while he is working, okay? So you can talk to Shane um after work at the saloon, usually he hangs out there. He is, uh, oh, here we go. This is his mom, Pam. Hey, kid, the name's Pam. Awesome. Oh, looks like something's up at Pierre's. Look, there's an exclamation point, and this says, um, help wanted. I have a craving for seaweed. Please bring one uh, by for me. And this is from Willie, the fishing dude, and he'll give us 60 gold if we get it, and it makes him happy. We can accept the quest and be like, cool. All right. Um, and so when you get a small quest like that, it actually goes here in your journal, and it tells you how much time you have. Up in the upper left, it says we have two days to do this. So if we turn this in within two days, um, it as it tells you, it will improve Willie's relationship with you because it makes him happy, and he'll give you 60 gold. Now, you get seaweed by fishing, okay? So we could actually fish and just mess around with it. And you don't necessarily need bait to fish. It improves your chances of catching things. Oh, here we go. Oh, we can't pick that up. Um, our inventory is all full. But you can catch something like seaweed and trash and things uh, without bait or let's see. Let's experiment. Pick this up. Okay. 
Uh, by the way, here's the bus. There's stuff to gather right here at the bus stop sometimes. You can go over here, okay, if you want, uh, to the left. And there's a mine cart up here, which we'll use later. All right, and we're going to go down here. Okay, I'm going to dump stuff into our chest. Like that. But we can also add to existing stacks and put things in there. And there we go. I'm going to take out that fishing pole. So we have a little time. So you can fish right here if you want. Okay, all you have to do is get your fishing pole selected and push X. All right, and cast it. If you hold X when you cast it, you see that fill up and it affects how far you throw it. And you kind of wait for it to, you'll hear it, you'll hear it. And if it beeps at you, it's time to pull now. And it's time to play the fishing mini game, okay? Uh-huh. Here we go. Here we go. And I'll explain this. There. There. So, we caught a sunfish, our first fish. <laughs> Let me talk you through that process. So you hold X to fill up the power bar to affect how far you throw your cast. Then, as your cast goes in, you're sitting there, and it will kind of, like, make some noise beep a little bit, and you'll see the um, kind of floater bob up and down. And then, when you catch something, it'll say hit, and you push X immediately to go to the next screen. Then what's happening is there's a green kind of little bar and there's a fish icon. And what you need to do is just keep that green bar on the fish icon by either tapping X to raise the green bar or not pushing X to let it sink to the bottom. And you kind of just adjust the frequency that you're tapping to match where the fish is. And you either need to speed up or slow down your tapping of the X button to kind of keep it in that sweet spot long enough so you can reel it in. Hopefully that's a reasonable explanation. It's something that you just get through practice. I wasn't really expecting to catch a fish without bait, but um, sometimes you can. Now, that being said, I'm fishing in my pond. So maybe catching something like seaweed would be difficult in a pond. So instead of fishing at that pond, and by the way, you really don't necessarily want to fish at that pond. It's so tiny, okay? Um, let's fish in the ocean. But let's just look at the calendar and, okay, it's not until the 7th that it's somebody's birthday and it's Lewis's birthday. Oh, Emily, hi. It never rains in Calico Desert. That's where my friend Sandy lives. Indeed, she does. We'll visit Sandy one day, but not now. All right. Now, you notice I'm not really giving anybody gifts. You can do that if you want, um, but our inventory is empty. Um, so this is a good time for us to come pick up a clam, a cockle, and an oyster. Get a bunch of different foraging going. And then now we can just walk out here. Oh. Looks like Sebastian's chilling over here. Oh, you just moved in, right? Cool. All right. So there's Sebastian. Now you can cast anywhere you like here. Okay. See if we can catch anything. Sebastian, you startled me. Okay, I pushed it before it said hit. Um, oh, no, Willie's leaving. All right, well, that's too bad. I was going to sell Willie my sunfish and actually buy some bait. That's okay. Let's just stand here, okay, and fish. Maybe we'll get lucky. Wow. 
Waiting. Waiting. Okay. Now that, see, there's the fish, and I'm tapping it, and I'm just keeping it right along with it. If it goes up, and we caught a sardine. All right, then. It's a silver sardine, too. How about that? The fish that you can catch in the night and the day are different. Um, or some fish can only be caught in the day or in the night. And each fishing area has different fish in it. Um, so there's like freshwater fish. Uh, we call it an anchovy. Okay. Um, and now our inventory is full. So it's pretty much time to go back home at this point. Because we can't really put anything else in our inventory. So let's run back home. Remember, you can always keep your eyes out for any worms or anything like that. But we're just going to go back. So fishing is something that uh, is very peaceful and relaxing. And you can do it if you like. I'm doing it right now for the express purposes of just showing fishing to you and explaining how fishing works. Uh, but also we do have a quest for Willie that would be fun if we could get it done. But do not stress out if you don't complete somebody's request it doesn't do anything bad you just don't get any of the positive rewards so it's not like you hurt your relationship or you let them down um it it is totally fine all right so i'm gonna go up cut through all this grass and oh all right get out of here now you can sell your fish if you want I like to keep one of every fish on hand. And then once I get better quality fish, I like to keep just maybe one of each good quality fish. I'm keeping one of everything just because I like to do that. Um, but you don't have to do that at all. All right. So now that it's a little bit later, let's try fishing. Okay. But over here. Now, by the way, just as a heads up, uh, fishing does take energy. It is not a free activity. But I'm going to use more of my energy by just chopping down this tree right now. Just getting some, some wood. Making sure to use my energy each day. This will help us if we want to make another chest, if we start to fill the chest up that we have, store more stuff. Always cool. We go. All right. And let's fish. Now it's nighttime. So if there is a special fish in this area that's night only, you can come here. And we fought some trash. So this is kind of what happens with seaweed. If you pull up seaweed, you don't go to the fishing screen. You would come to just immediately pull it out. You can catch trash, newspapers, um, you know, find broken glasses, AOL, CD-ROMs, all kinds of junk and things like that in addition to fish. There's good stuff you can catch. There's rare fish. If you're interested, you can look on the wiki. It shows you um, every type of fish you can catch in a particular area, what time of day, what bait you want. Yep, there's broken glasses right there. So that happened. All right, and it's getting late at night. So instead of staying out beyond midnight, I'm just going to chop down this tree. collect all this stuff, and get us home. <laughs> oh my goodness. Go. It's getting close to the wire. We made it. Now, I'm going to open this up, and I am going to just sell this trash. You don't... I'm not saying we're going to get a lot of money for it. Maybe zero. 
but I don't want it, okay? We don't need it, and I'm going to run to bed and get it there. Now, there is something later that you can use to, like, recycle trash or whatever, but for the most part, trash is no good. There are some quests that actually ask you to, like, catch trash and to get rid of it, to clean up the waters, but they don't want the trash, okay? Um, so, uh, and if you get a quest for something, hey, look at this. Be aware that they usually require you to um, catch the fish or whatever when the quest starts and not, like, have it already stored up and give it to people. But sometimes that does work. Just depends. Now, this is what happens when you get enough of an activity done to level up. It happens when you sleep. And we leveled up our foraging by picking up all those onions and such like we saw and uh, chopping down trees. So this gave us plus one axe proficiency, um, which just means that we are better at using an axe. Um, I think it means it takes less energy when we use an axe. Trees sometimes drop seeds, which is great so that we can replant them. And we got a new crafting recipe, which means we can make wild seeds and we can make a field snack. So this is just all the stuff we got for getting just level one of foraging. And that was day three. Now you see, this is the cell menu. This is the first time we got to see this um, because we actually put stuff in the bin. And it breaks everything down by category so you can see how much money you made for everything you sold. Things that your farm produced, things that you foraged, stuff you fished up, things you found in the mines and other. And right here, you can see, um, you can click the plus sign to get this detailed record screen where you see, okay, I sold trash and I sold glasses and I actually got nothing for it. So, say la vie, no money, but we got rid of garbage. So, there you go. Okay. All right, everybody. That was day three. Uh, and in the next episode, we will do day four. We're going to ha actually have to water our crops uh, on this day. But things are going well, and our parsnips are almost actually ready to grow, and we'll be able to pull them in and make some cash. And we can continue meeting people, completing the quests, maybe finding seaweed for Willie if we want, or just clear out our farm and level up our skills. The choice is ours. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you're still finding this series to be fun and informative. Take care.